What is going on guys, it's Steph here and in this video I'll be reviewing Atomic Habits by James Clear. Let's just get that in the shot and like... Nice. So what is a habit? A habit is basically something that you do on autopilot with very little brain power. Something like drinking your coffee in the morning. Now James Clear says that Atomic Habits are the basic building blocks of achieving remarkable results. If you have not bought the book yet, go buy it. Like, I'm gonna go through this very fast, but there's a lot of stories and a lot of information that I'm not telling you that's really in the book that's just amazing. It's really, really worth buying. So what are atomic habits? An atomic habit is a small change that you apply in your daily life that improves your life or your a career or whatever your relationships by just one percent so it's basically just a small improvement in whatever you're doing and james clear states that the best way to improve that day by day by day is to form habits so there are a lot of chapters in this book i'm going to go through most of them so let's start off with chapter one chapter one discusses the concept of goals basically he says that goals are useless what did you just say? Goals have a place, right? It sets the direction for where you want to go. But the problem with goals are that, let's take an Olympic race, for example. The guy that comes in first and the guy that finishes last had the same goal. They both wanted to win. So the separating factor from winners and losers or success and unsuccessful um, is definitely not goals. And James states that it's not the goals that make the difference, it's the system behind achieving that goal that makes the difference whether you're a winner or loser chapter two then focuses on not changing the outcome but rather the identity so how do you change your identity well firstly you decide who you want to be and secondly prove that to yourself with small gradual improving wins so if you want to be an athlete you need to change your identity into someone that identifies as an athlete, right? So how does an athlete look? How does an athlete act? You need to become that person. And the way you do that is you gradually build up till there. So you just start off by going to the gym once a week for half an hour, and eventually you build up, you know, to going every single day. Chapter three, habits basically consist of four steps. The cue, the craving, the response, and the reward. The cue is what initiates the behavior. Like you drive from work to home, and you smell food. The craving is you kind of get hungry and you kind of, you know, in the mood to eat right now. So that's the craving. That's what motivates you to take some action. The response is then the actual habit that you perform. So you smell, you smell food, you have the craving. Now you stop at McDonald's and you buy food. That's the response. The reward is you had a great meal, you feel nice, you full. So that's the reward uh, and you like the reward, it's satisfying. And then they go into how do you create a good habit? So firstly, you make it obvious, you make it attractive, you make it easy to perform and you make it satisfying. How do you break a bad habit? Well, you make it invisible, you make it unattractive, you make it really hard to perform and then lastly, you make it unsatisfying. The basis of chapter four is then you should start making a list of all the habits, bad, good, neutral, make a list of all the habits that you perform on a daily basis so when you go through your day just make like notes and you know right i take my morning coffee i drive to work i listen to the radio while on the way to work stuff like that just random things that you do every day categorize them by it's a good habit it's a neutral habit and it's a bad habit now chat five is where the things get interesting okay so this is where um, he teaches you about implementation intention so the example that he gives is a study that was done with uh, people that wanted to improve their health and fitness and so on so they had three groups the three groups were split up as follows group one they told them to just track how many times per week they go to the gym group two had the same instruction as group one but they also should spend some time reading the benefits of what exercise actually does for you group three had the same instruction as group two but they also had to write out a plan of how and when they would go to the gym now at the end of the study they tracked how many of these people actually went to the gym at least once per week now in group one and two only 35 to 38 percent of people actually went to the gym just one time per week in group three 91 percent of people 
went to the gym. And this is the power of actually using implementation intentions. Now, what is an implementation intention? It's basically just writing down an exact plan and time of what you are going to do. You can combine this with habit stacking. Habit stacking is basically taking one of the items that you wrote down earlier that you already do, one of the habits, and then combining that with a habit that you wanna do. So for example, after I drink my morning coffee, I will pray for three minutes and thank God for all the good things that he's doing in my life. Something random like that. The people in group three had a sentence that went something like this, uh, during the next week, I will perform at least 20 minutes of vigorous exercise at day, time, place. That's basically that. So it's just a sentence that helps you reinform what you actually want to do. Now, chapter six was all about your environment. So how that works is, let's say, for example, you want to start playing guitar more. All you have to do is put your guitar in the middle of your living room and play it. <laughs> because it's in the middle of your living space, you'll most likely play it more. So just set up your environment to make it easier to perform your habit. Chapter seven then focused on how to break a bad habit. And that's basically just the inverse of chapter six. So instead of putting the guitar in the middle of the living room, just put it away. If you want to stop playing guitar, of course. So uh, just make it invisible. Chapter eight then has another great thing called temptation bundling. So what this is about is basically combining something that you like with something that you need to do. Combining this with the habit stacking formula, it would probably be something like after I drink my morning cup of coffee, I will say three things that I'm grateful for. After I say three things that I'm grateful for, I will scroll Facebook. So the grateful for thing is something that you want to start doing. So it's a new habit and the Facebook thing is uh, something that you enjoy doing, for example. And then the morning coffee thing, of course, is a habit that you're already performing. So you're basically using temptation bundling and habit stacking in one. Chapter nine is something that we've all heard. It's just about um, surrounding yourself with people that actually have already achieved at least partly of what you want to achieve, but surround yourself with people that are actually successful. Chapter 10 was actually the only one that really focused on like mindset. I was actually kind of scared of going into this book and it would just be like change your mindset and not a lot of practical advice, but it was kind of just the reverse. The entire book was a bunch of like do this exactly step by step. And then chapter 10 was the only one that's really about changing the mindset. So how do you make performing hard habits easier, change your mindset to um, having a mindset of I must do that to I get to do that. So instead of saying I have to play guitar now, say I get to play guitar. It's actually a privilege. You have a guitar. I mean, so just change your mindset and be grateful that you actually have the opportunity to perform this stuff. So chapter 11 starts off with a great story. It's about a college professor that uh, has um, a photography class, right? And he splits up the class in two. So he's like, guys, listen, uh, two groups, one group, you guys will be focused on quantity. So you're gonna submit your top 50 photos. For example, I can't remember the number, but you're gonna submit, let's say your top 50 photos. And um, quality group, this is now the second part of the group. So quantity, quality, the quality group, you guys have to submit one photo, your best photo, of the entire year, right? So you're gonna do that, right? So you're gonna focus on having a perfect photo. To his surprise, what do you think actually happened? Like, leave it down in the comments. Quality or quantity, what do you guys think? To his surprise then, the best photos all came out of the quantity group, right? The quality group really struggled because they were so focused on perfection and perfection is the enemy of any progress, right? So the key to performing better in any area is to practice, practice, practice. So chapter 12 was really also an interesting one. It's all about the law of least effort. So we as human beings, we always strive to do the thing that has the least amount of effort attached to it. So we all have bad days. Motivation will 100% not be there every single day. We all have bad days. So for those days, your environment has to be set up in a way that actually still motivates you to do the habit. So make it harder to actually not do the habit than to actually do the habit. Chapter 13 then also gives a great trick. So if you're still struggling after all this advice um, to actually perform the habit, all you have to do is just scale it down. 
So instead of aiming for this massive, I have to spend two hours today reading, just slow it down. Start with as little as two minutes. So if you want to become a reader, right? You want to read every single day for one, two, three hours or whatever. Um, start off by just setting an alarm on your phone, which would be the cue. You can go back to the other um, initial chapter one things that I said, but alarm on your phone and read for just two minutes. After two minutes, stop, right? Just stop. The story he gives is an example of a guy that went to the gym for just 15 minutes, right? A day. And eventually it led up to him spending like an hour because you're already there and, there and you start enjoying it. So that's the trick, two minute trick. Chapter 14 is about how to make good habits more consistent in your life and bad habits nearly impossible. They call it commitment devices. Now this is really good, right? I've used this in my own life, it really works. It's basically like setting up a contract between um, actually between yourself, right? So setting up a contract, if you do not do this or you do that, then this is the result. So if you're a smoker, you would set up a contract with yourself and usually it's good to have a third party with you, right? So have a friend that um, commits to this with you or something like that. So when you smoke, you have to run around the block in your work clothes. Random example, but this has worked really in my life. And it works better when you have someone like an accountabil accountability partner that um, takes accountability with you, right? So you have to then run around the block in your work clothes. So it's a really good way to stop bad habits and get new habits formed. Chapter 15 is all about making it satisfying. So uh, making the reward satisfying. So most of our habits are usually long-term, like going to the gym. You only really see results after months to years. Now the problem with this is to keep a habit really going, you need to be rewarded in some way in the short term. And like I said, most habits are rewarded in the long term. So for gym example, after every week or after every day, go for a body massage and treat yourself. Um, just don't make the reward conflicting. You can do anything like, I don't know, just get a reward after each habit that you perform, like reward yourself, but it must not contradict. So don't go eat ice cream after you went to the gym because then it's going against what you're actually going for. So go for a body massage, a 10 minute body massage or something, you know, just reward yourself in the short term as well. Chapter 15 then just talks about how to make this in the long term um, viable because after you form the habit, it might get kind of, you know, stale. You might not really continue on improving because once you have a habit, it's just kind of, you do it on autopilot, you don't really improve. So how do you stop this from happening? Track yourself, have visual measures. So track yourself on an Excel sheet, right? Your gym progress or the amount of pages that you read today and try and improve every week, every year. Just keep on improving. And how do you keep on improving? You need to know what you actually achieved in the past. The last few chapters actually focuses on genetics versus talents. So personally, I'm not a really a tall guy. So I would not do well in basketball. <laughs> um, so. I did, however, receive quite a mathematical brain. So that's why I actually do software development for a living. Long story short, that's where God put me, right? So he put me, he gave me a brain for mathematics and trying kind of problem solving. That's where I function and I enjoy it. So you need to choose an environment where you actually have some form of natural ability, where you're better than the average person. You'll be happier and it also will be easier to make much more progress in this field that you're naturally better at than the average person. Thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope this helped. If you want more videos like this, let me know and press the subscribe button, press that like button and leave a comment down below on what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.